Hello, masterminds. Welcome back to class. Our topic for today is schizophrenia, and we are going to discuss schizophrenia under the following subheadings. We will start with the definition of schizophrenia, then we move on to the signs and symptoms, followed by the causes, and we are going to end the video by talking about the management of schizophrenia. But before we do any of these, let me give you a little bit of background information on how the word schizophrenia came about. In the year 1887, a German psychiatrist by name Emil Kreplin described a condition which is known today as schizophrenia, but at the time he called it dementia precox. Dementia precox simply means early madness or madness of the youth, and that is typically because of the onset of the disorder. Schizophrenia or dementia precox typically happens in late teens to the early 20s in males, and in females it typically happens from late 20s to early 30s. And that was why he used the term dementia precox, that is early madness, to describe the condition. Few years afterwards, another gentleman came on the scene by name Eugene Blela, who was a Swiss psychiatrist, and he coined the term schizophrenia to describe dementia precox. Eugene Blela, in 1908, coined the term schizophrenia from these two words, that is schism and friend, where schism means split and friend means mind. So the literal translation of schizophrenia simply means split mind and that is because of the fragmentation of the mental state of an individual that is affected by schizophrenia now that we know how the term schizophrenia came about let's move on to the definition schizophrenia is a severe psychotic disorder characterized by recurring psychosis which causes disturbed thoughts emotions and behavior typically causing the sufferer to lose touch with reality runs a chronic course dominated by remissions and relapses of symptoms. I'm going to underline the keywords and explain them to you now. It states that schizophrenia is a severe psychotic disorder. So severe psychotic disorder characterized by recurrent psychosis, which causes disturbed thoughts, emotions, and behavior, typically causing the sufferer to lose touch with reality, runs a chronic course dominated by remissions and relapses. Let's start with a severe psychotic disorder. A psychotic disorder simply is any disorder where psychosis is implicated as the main clinical feature. So when we say a severe psychotic disorder, that means a disorder with psychosis which causes a lot of dysfunction to the individual suffering from this kind of disorder. And the psychosis that is present in schizophrenia is recurrent. That means it happens repeatedly and causes disturbed thoughts emotions, and behavior, typically causing them to lose touch with reality. The level of psychosis that is present in schizophrenia typically causes an individual to struggle to differentiate between reality and fantasy because of the kind of perceptions, thoughts, and emotions they are having. And it also runs a chronic cause. A disease or a disorder, in this case, schizophrenia, that runs a chronic cause simply means that this disorder stays with the individual for a very long time. It doesn't get treated easily like how a urinary tract infection or how a, a common cold can be easily treated. It has an extended period where it stays with the individual. And the whole cause or the whole chronic cause of this disorder is dominated by remissions. These are periods where the individual appears to be symptom free or a period where the symptoms of the individual is lessened and relapses. That is where the symptoms worsen. I hope the little explanation I have given to the keywords will help you understand the definition of schizophrenia. If you don't really understand what psychosis means, I have a dedicated video where I explain the signs and symptoms of psychosis and the actual meaning of psychosis in too much detail. I strongly recommend that you watch this video if you don't understand what psychosis means. Now that we are done with the definition of schizophrenia, let's move on to the signs and symptoms of schizophrenia. The signs and symptoms of schizophrenia is broadly categorized into positive and negative signs and symptoms. And depending on what you read, we have a third category that is called psychomotor symptoms of schizophrenia. I will start by explaining the positive signs and symptoms of schizophrenia 
by the way, I have a separate video where I explained the positive symptoms of psychosis, the negative symptoms of psychosis, and psychomotor symptoms of psychosis. I wouldn't go into much details in this lecture video. If you want more details on that, I suggest you watch those videos. The positive symptoms of schizophrenia are those symptoms that are present in individuals with schizophrenia but are absent in the ordinary population. In other words, they are the signs and symptoms a person develops after they get schizophrenia. But in the ordinary population, these signs and symptoms are not present. We have three main positive signs and symptoms of schizophrenia. We have hallucinations, delusions, and disorganized thinking. Hallucinations, simply put, are false sensory perceptions that occurs without the presence of a stimulus. A typical example of hallucination is hearing voices when nobody is really speaking to you. Alternatively, you can be seeing things although there is nothing there to be seen. And for some people, they may feel like insects crawling on their skin or under their skin, where in fact there is nothing on their skin to be felt. These are all examples of hallucinations. Hallucinations can be visual, auditory, gustatory, olfactory, or tactile. Now let's move on to delusions. Delusions are fixed false beliefs that remain unchanged, even in the presence of conflicting evidence. In other words, a person with delusions will be having some kind of false beliefs and the person will hold on to these beliefs such that nothing is going to change what they are thinking or what they are believing in. An example of delusion is paranoid delusion where someone is extremely suspicious of the actions or intentions of other people. Someone may strongly believe that someone wants to poison them. That is an example of paranoid delusion. Another common example of delusion is believing that people are talking about you on the TV where in actual fact, no one is really talking about you on the TV. There are some special forms of delusions that typically occurs in schizophrenia, and I want you to be aware of these kind of delusions. They are called delusions of control, where the person thinks an external force is controlling their behavior. We may have a form of delusion of control, such as thought insertion, where the person believes that the thought they are thinking has been put into their mind by an external force, and they have no control over this. Another form of delusion of control is thought withdrawal, where a person may think that the thoughts they have are being taken away from their head or from their brain by an external force. We also have delusion of positivity, where a person believes that their actions are being controlled by an external force. So um, when they walk, they believe they are walking because an external force is causing them to walk. When they talk, they believe they are talking because an external force is causing them to talk. Any action they engage in is attributed to another force that is external of them, causing them to undertake these kind of actions. And finally, under the delusions of control, we have thought broadcasting, where a person believes that the thought they are thinking is currently known by other people, or the things they are thinking about can be heard by other people even before they speak. We are still under the positive symptoms of schizophrenia, and we are going to talk about disorganized thinking. Disorganized thinking has to do with how a person is thinking. Remember when I spoke about delusions, it was about what the person is thinking. Now with disorganized thinking, it's about the manner in which a person thinks. Disorganized thinking is also known as formal thought disorder. And it is, by definition, the disruption in the manner in which a person process and organize their thoughts. Disorganized thinking is typically inferred from a person's speech. So by way of talking, a psychiatrist or a mental health professional can identify if you have a form of disorganized thinking. There are several examples or forms of disorganized thinking. A typical example is flight of ideas. When a person is talking about a lot of things all at the same time, we also have circumstantiality. That is where a person answers a question in an unrelated manner, such that they end up beating about the bush. But at the end of the day, they come back to answer the question. We also have word salad. That is when a person strings a sentence using unrelated words such that they fail to communicate any meaning at all. So the way you think about word salad is like picking up random words, putting them together and then speaking them in a sentence as if you want to communicate something to another person. Another example of disorganized thinking is neologism, where a person with schizophrenia speaks with made up words, but to them these words have a meaning 
but these are ways which do not even exist. I think that is enough for the positive symptoms of schizophrenia. We are moving on to the negative symptoms of schizophrenia. The negative symptoms of schizophrenia are those behaviors that are present in the ordinary population but are absent in people with schizophrenia. In other words, the negative signs and symptoms of schizophrenia are those behaviors that are subtracted or taken away from people with schizophrenia but are still retained in individuals without schizophrenia. You can think of the negative signs and symptoms of schizophrenia as the six A's. We have energia, that is loss of energy or lack of energy. We also have anhedonia, that is the inability to feel pleasure. Evolution is lack of motivation or the loss of motivation. We have apathy, that is the inability to feel emotions or indifference towards people or activities. Elogia means poverty of speech or when a person with a negative signs and symptoms of schizophrenia speaks with very few words. And finally, flat effect is the inability to express emotions. We are now on the final category for the signs and symptoms of schizophrenia. That is psychomotor symptoms. As the word suggests, psychomotor symptoms are those symptoms that has to do with the behavior or the movement of a person with schizophrenia. We have disorganized behavior and we have catatonia. Disorganized behavior simply are like weird, strange and purposeless behaviors that are demonstrated by people with schizophrenia. An example is laughing inappropriately, um, giggling, staring blankly into space, talking to self, pacing and making bizarre hand gestures, for instance. The final thing under psychomotor symptoms that we are going to talk about is catatonia. Catatonia is a psychomotor symptom where the ability of a person to move, speak or react to the environment is significantly impaired. This can manifest in the form of stupor or excitement. In a catatonic stuporous phase, a person appears awake but they cannot respond to the external environment. They may be rigid, motionless, mute and wouldn't even respond when they are spoken to. Catatonic excitement, which is almost like a direct opposite of catatonic stupor, is where a person has increased energy level and activity level, where they can exhibit excessive and purposeless motor activity. It can manifest in a number of ways, such as unprovoked agitation, restlessness and repetitive movement. The big question is what causes schizophrenia? The answer is nobody really knows what is going on. But theories exist to explain the etiological implications of schizophrenia. We have the biological theories. We have the psychological theories. And finally, we have the sociocultural theories. Quickly, with the biological theories, there are research findings that demonstrate that schizophrenia runs in families. For instance, if you have a family member who is diagnosed or suffering from schizophrenia, your chances of developing schizophrenia is higher than an individual without a family member with schizophrenia. Also, under the biological theories, we have the biochemical imbalance explanation. The neurotransmitter that gets mentioned a lot in the causation of schizophrenia is dopamine, where research indicates that increased level of dopamine causes schizophrenia, and by decreasing the level or the activity of dopamine, in the brain of a person with schizophrenia, you can decrease the signs and symptoms of the disorder. Finally, under the biological theories, there is this explanation that abnormally large ventricles of the brain causes schizophrenia or at least predispose a person to developing schizophrenia. Under the psychological theories, the most important explanation is by Sigmund Freud, that is the psychodynamic approach. Sigmund Freud believes that when an individual regresses to an earlier stage of development, they get predisposed to developing schizophrenia. Finally, under the causes of schizophrenia, we have the sociocultural theories. Notable explanations under this theory has to do with family dynamics, such as parental conflict, sibling rivalry, and abuse and neglect of children, which all predispose them to developing schizophrenia. We are going to end today's lecture by talking about the management of schizophrenia. Under the management of schizophrenia, we have the use of medications, 
the use of psychological therapies and community rehabilitation. We will have time to talk about the use of medications in schizophrenia. But for now, understand that the most popular medication that is used in the management of schizophrenia are called antipsychotics. And we have various forms of antipsychotics. We have the typical antipsychotics, which are also called the first generation antipsychotics. And we have the atypical antipsychotics, also known as the second generation antipsychotics. Some of them can be tablets, others can be injections. We will have time and talk about all of that. Psychological therapies used in the management of schizophrenia has to do with the use of talking therapies as seen in CBT, family therapies and social skills training. Last but not the least is community rehabilitation. Community rehabilitation has to do with a number of programs aimed at helping the individual understand the presence of the condition, how the condition affects their activities of daily living, and helping them make adjustments to help them reintegrate back into community. This brings us to the end of today's lecture video. If you have any questions, please drop a comment and I'll do my best to respond to it. Please like this video, share with others who will benefit from it, and don't forget to subscribe for more educational videos like this. This is Masterminds Nelson. Ladies and gentlemen, class has ended.